In this video, we're going to learn how to determine the OD600 of a sample. OD600 stands for the optical density at 600 nanometers of a sample. And what that means, OD, or optical density, is a measure of the light scattering of, of a sample. Uh, 600 nanometers is chosen for the wavelength at which this measurement is determined because relatively few components of biological systems, so relatively few cell components, absorb light strongly at 600 nanometers. Therefore, any difference um, between the light in and the light out in a spectrophotometer is likely due to light scattering, due to particulate matter suspended um, in your sample. So, like cells being the primary form of particulate matter. And we're going to determine this measurement using our Eppendorf biophotometer. Uh, that's a basically a simplified spectrophotometer with built-in calibration curves, so we don't have to build new calibration curves each time we take a measurement. Okay, so to uh, turn on the machine, there's a switch here in the back. So we're going to press that. And now I'm going to turn that back around. I'll rotate this to face the machine. Okay, so it looks like it's already on the OD600 program. If it wasn't, so say if it was on the RNA or the DNA program, you would just press the OD600 button. You want to press enter. And now it's asking us to blank something. So typically we blank with a cuvette. So you see there's a box of cuvettes over here. Um, this, one of these white boxes will be floating around this area. Otherwise there are usually a few extras in the drawers right below where my finger here is pointing. So we typically want to blank with one of these cuvettes uh, containing the growth medium that our sample is in. So if we want to determine the OD600 of a uh, of a cell culture. For example, I've actually got one here. I've got one down here that I want to measure. And as you can see, this is turbid. It's all foamy because I've got cells growing in there. Um, I want to determine the OD600 of that. I would want to blank with the growth medium that these cells are growing in. And that's actually SOB. But generally, it's fine to blank with water. Um, I'm going to begin by answering a question that you will probably have at some point. What is the you know, reproducibility in measurements between these cuvettes. Obviously they're disposable, but if you're taking multiple measurements um, in, in one set, do you want to reuse the same cuvette? So let's just stick that in there without any water and press blank. Uh, press, uh, press blank. Okay. So that's zeroed. It's worth noting that this uses a xenon flash lamp, so uh, it doesn't really require any time to warm up. Also worth noting is that the beam path is going this way, so I've put in the cuvette like this, lengthwise, not like this. You want it this way so that way you have a one centimeter path length um, from front to back. So that's zeroed with that cuvette. All right, I'll just put that one up there. Let's try three cuvettes. Here's a second one, and I'll just sample that, again, with no liquid in there. Again, zero. So it's looking like these give pretty similar measurements for OD600, and that makes sense, because we're looking for uh, a, a change in intensity between the uh, light source and the receptor at 600 nanometers, and these clear cuvettes are not going to absorb strongly at 600 nanometers. Uh, sample again. Uh, again, zero. I'll do one more just to prove a point. One more cuvette. Sample. Okay. So basically, when you're taking an OD600 measurement, you will you do not expect to see great variability between the different cuvettes. Um, so it's actually worth just using a new cuvette for each measurement rather than dumping it out and rinsing it out because by rinsing it out you're going to dilute your sample. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and blank with water now and answer a second common question is what are the, what is the OD600 of just plain growth medium? Actually we'll measure water just for fun. Okay. So apparently that absorbed less. That doesn't really make very much sense. That might be because there were bubbles in there or something, or it might just be due to internal reflection. Take another sample. 
But again, that 0 0.05, that's relatively small, and that could just be due to experimental error. Nope, that seems to be reproducible. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and blank with water, uh, because that's fairly commonly done. So, yes, this culture is growing in SOB, but suppose I was in a hurry and I didn't want to take the time to go and take sterile SOB, put that in a cuvette, uh, and I just wanted to blank with water. How accurate of a measurement would that be? Okay, so here I've blanked with water. Um, I'm actually going to start with LB because this, that's the simplest of the growth media. So I have a flame going here. I'm working sterile uh, because I'm going to take my P1000 and dip that into a sterile media bottle. I'm going to just clean off the barrel of my pipette really quickly. There we are. Um, it would be much more convenient to do that without the camera there. But anyways, okay, so I've got LB. I'm going to take one mil of LB. Realistically, in these cuvettes, you only need about 0.8 mils of sample. But I'll just take a little bit extra um, for now. Okay, one thing that's important to note when you're taking these measurements is that bubbles uh, will cause a lot of error. So bubbles on the top, like that, are fine. But if you have bubbles down around here, that will affect your measurement. Okay. And I was careful not to touch this, but otherwise I'd want to make sure to wipe that off with a Kim wipe. Actually, I did just touch it, so uh, you'll want to wipe that off with a Kim wipe before taking a measurement. Okay, so now we're wondering, what is the OD600, as it were, of LB compared to water? So, sample. Point zero one two. I'll just write that down. And now I'm going to do 2XLB. So that's basically twice the concentration of uh, organics as you would have in normal LB. And Again, these cuvettes aren't sterile, so once you pipette something into there, uh, you can consider that sample uh, sacrificed. You're not going to use that again. Okay, so compared to water, 2XLB gives an OD600 of 0 0.023, which is pretty much twice that of LB, which makes sense. Okay. Now let's look at SOB. That's what my culture here is actually growing in. Point zero one two, about the same as LB. And finally, I'm going to look at TB. That's a very rich, terrific broth. That's a very rich growth medium. I've got here, I'm just going to clean off my pet again one more time because I'm reaching all the way down into that one liter bottle. might actually be more convenient to use a serological for this, but oh, that's okay. I have to... And I'm going to grab one more new cuvette for this. It's kind of a waste of cuvettes, but it's okay. It's, we're learning. And finally, TB. Um, sample. Sample. It's going to be higher than 2XLB. Oh, yes it is. So 0 0.029. Okay. 
So just for a frame of reference, uh, most protocols, such as protocols for the induction of protein expression or for harvesting cells to make competent cells, say you want to induce, say, for, for induction, they say between 0.6 and 0.8. And for competent cells, for Z-comp cells, they say between 0.4 and 0.6. So um, all of these are pretty small relative to that 0.4 to 0.6 or 0.6 to 0.8 bracket. If you're using TB, you'd probably want to actually blank with TB, whereas if you're blanking with SOB, it's going to account for about a 1% uh, variation in your measurement when you get up around, or less than 1% uh, of uh, your measurement when you get up around 0.6. Um, uh, sorry, just greater than 1%. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to take my OD600 of this sample, just so I'm not wasting cuvettes because I'm not actually trying to get a particularly precise measurement right now. I'm going to uh, dump out my SOB cuvette into the liquid waste here, and I'll uh, I'll tap that down really well. You can do this if you're not. Oh, that's probably really obnoxious on the camera. Sorry. Uh, this is a good thing to do if you're trying to conserve cuvettes, and if you're not, you know, let's. You don't expect that you're close to your induction OD yet, so you're not needing a particularly accurate. Uh, answer. Now, to take the OD of this, I'm not going to reach all the way down in there with my pipette. That would actually be kind of difficult to get to the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my serological pipetter here. There are, just for your reference, uh, in the drawer right below where my finger is, a bunch of two mil serological pipettes uh, that are suitable for this purpose. Okay. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm peeling that back, holding it back with my thumbs. Uh, I'm pushing that snugly into my serological pipetter, and I'll just put the sheath down there. You want to make sure that your cells are well mixed before you take OD. Cells settle relatively quickly, so if you've been letting this sit out on the bench like I was, you want to give it a good swirl before you take your OD600 measurement. And I'll take about a one mil sample. Yeah, that's the one that I emptied out. And uh, looks like we're okay on bubbles. And I'll press, yeah. So there's no um, bubbles down towards the bottom. Now I'm going to press sample. And this serological pipette can just go in the solid waste over here, along with these two chem wipes. So this is an OD of about one. Um, these are actually, these were destined to be competent cells, but I didn't need to use them, so I just left them growing. Um, so I'm not too worried about them being overgrown. Uh, but anyways, I think that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you for the next video.